Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this service of prayer and music here at the Center for it, United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, and alongside our music director, Joe Ferrante, we welcome you to this time of centering, and listening, and maybe even responding in a way together through prayer, music, and beyond. We want to thank Max Bernard for being here today and bringing his gift of violin. He's been here a few times before, and this time he's leading us in all of the pieces throughout the service. So thank you for sharing your gift with us. And again, we welcome you. So to prepare ourselves for this time, I always ask that you center with me. So whatever your day has brought, go ahead and close your eyes. And I ask you to just breathe out. Breathe out anything that would distract you. And together, as you breathe in, let that be the Holy Spirit. Our theme today is give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. We often, we don't do that very much. We might say a quick thank you or a quick note. Often our prayers are much more about what we hope for, what we long for, others in need that we're praying for. And those prayers are wonderful. But one thing we might be able to do a little more of is give thanks to God for everything that has already been given to us. So let us join in our opening prayer. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you have made me glad, O Lord, in all you have done, and I sing for joy at the work of your hands. That's from Psalm 92, verses 1, 2, and 4. And I sing for joy at the work of your hands. And again, we welcome Max to our sanctuary today to lead us in music, and there's going to be a lot of joy coming from your hands in just a moment as you lead us in our first piece, and it's uh, pronounced Karat, is that right? Karat. to 
come tonight with so many prayers on our hearts, don't we? Prayers of joy and thanksgiving for summertime and for times at the beach, times maybe on a boat or a friend's boat, times of camping, maybe getting out and seeing friends and seeing family again. But we also have a lot of prayers that we lift up to God for all kinds of reasons. We have brothers and sisters not only in this nation, but around the world that are in such desperate need. In Afghanistan, in Haiti, in countries with all kinds of, of different disasters, human and natural, all around the world. We have those in this nation too, in Tennessee, as they're recovering from torrential rains, fires raging out west again, and even the tropical storm that blew through our area. Lots to be in prayer for. And then, of course, still in a pandemic. Still people with so many things going on in their lives. But as we continue to live in these days of giving thanks and prayers for so many, maybe even some of you that are in such need, we know that God is faithful. And even... If we're going through one of the darkest valleys of our lives, there's still something to give thanks for. And that God is with us. And that others will journey with us and hold our hands and bring us to the other side of what we're going through. We give thanks that we're not alone. So let us join in prayer. I'm going to ask you at home. Go ahead and lift up the prayers that you have to God as we're sharing in this together. Mighty God, we rejoice in your reckless and extravagant love scattered among us and found in the mud and thorns of life. We rejoice that your will for us and for the world is not one of carefully appointed judgment or neatly wrapped rewards. Your aim and desire for all your creation is a cup full and overflowing with good wine, a banquet for all to share, a harvest of full and ripe grains, a growing tree in which all can make their nest. Your gifts, freely offered, are life in all its fullness, hope in abundance, peace that passes all understanding, love that none can measure from which nothing can separate us. Give thanks for that prayer from Terry Hinks. And now let us join in the words that Christ taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And our next piece is also called Karat, this time by Bach.
this scripture reading from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. And we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. So Max, when you were young, when did you start playing the violin? I was four. You were four years old. I would imagine you were somewhere around this high. Can you imagine a little four-year-old playing the violin the first time you played it? I'm not trying to be mean to you, but it probably didn't sound like it sounded just now. Is that right? Is that fair? I do agree, yes. But, but when you played it, it brought you joy. And you felt connected to this instrument, and you have wanted to keep going now for, what, 12, 13 years, something like that? Something like that. 12 or 13 years. And many students, Joe, you can attest to this too, they may start with an instrument, but they don't keep going all the way. Sometimes they drop out after a couple of years or several years, and life gets in the way, or it's not calling to them anymore, and they move on to something else. But when you find what it is that you're supposed to do, and you answer that calling that comes from God, it can just sing. Just like it's just been singing from Max here today for these first two pieces and will again later on in this service. And like it does from all of us. When we are in sync with God, the world is right. And when we find the instrument within ourselves that God wants us to share with the world, all we need to do is to hone our skills and to practice and to be willing to share and to take a risk and maybe even put that on public display for others to listen and to appreciate. Now in Max's case, just one of the gifts he has involves a real life instrument. Well, you get what I'm talking about. There are those of you who are teachers, those that are nurses, those that are caregivers, those that are parents, those that are grandparents, those that are in the fields of protecting others, like police officers, firemen, firewomen, etc., or maybe even in the armed forces. There are those that work in manufacturing and banking, those that are in businesses of all kinds, and all of the arms that those businesses produce, like in distribution and delivery, so many in the food industry. And things have been rough over these last 18 months for many in so many professions and vocations. Let me tell you something, being a minister in these past 18 months hasn't always been easy either. It's not easy all the time, but we have all been struggling. But we're still here, and life is still good. And there still is a lot to give thanks for. And there is more than hope on the horizon for things to get even better than they are today. We certainly aren't in a position where things are as bad as they were over a year ago. We wouldn't necessarily call them fantastic, but it's getting better. We give thanks for science and for technology and for the commitment that we all have to keep ourselves and each other safe. And that commitment and that promise comes from God. And we turn to God and give thanks for all the blessings that we have and this journey that we've been on and how God has carried us through. What is the instrument that's inside of you? Maybe now we're going beyond career or vocation. We're going to what's in your soul. 
what really causes us to sing is when we're loving God and loving others. Now, we can do that through our vacations and our hobbies and our jobs. That can definitely happen. But how about just reaching out and checking on someone? How about getting outside and walking past someone and honestly smiling authentically maybe saying a little more than just how you doing and walking on by. Maybe getting out and experiencing something new or better yet, someone new. Maybe listening and praying for God to bring some new instrument for you to share with others and to trust that God will give you what you need to do. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, Joe and I know that sometimes when I'm singing, I hit a bunch of clunkers. I'm off tune, off key. Sometimes I'm not even on the right page. But you know what? It's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Max, I dare say, of course, never in our presence, but you might in your past have hit a wrong note once, probably a long time. It happens. God doesn't ask us to be perfect, and Scripture's not asking us to be perfect either. But make a joyful noise anyways. And that means literally make a joyful noise, full of joy in your life. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. You don't have to sing well. But just let your heart sing. Listen for God. Do what God is asking you to do. Trust that you already have that instrument inside of you. And go. And make a joyful noise to the Lord and to all the earth. Let us make that our promise. Now that we're heading into September and through September, and we're beginning school now, and we're starting a whole new season, let us make that our promise promise to make a joyful noise to you and to sing for you to the world. Amen. And that brings us back to Max and the joy that he brings us. And this last piece is called Adamani.
sharing your gift with us today. And we're going to close in prayer in this worship service with a prayer from St. Francis of Assisi. You are holy, Lord, the only God, and your deeds are wonderful. You are love. You are wisdom. You are humility. You are endurance. You are rest. You are peace. You are joy and gladness. You are all our riches, and you suffice for us. You are our protector. You are our guardian and defender. You are courage. You are our haven and hope. You are our faith and great consolation. You are our eternal life, great and wonderful Lord, merciful Savior, God Almighty. Amen. Go in peace and give thanks to the Lord and make a joyful noise.